I actually put a little tiny bit of effort into this. <laughs> I looked up the set numbers before I started the video because sometimes I get the uh, set numbers wrong because it's been so long and I forget the set numbers. So I wanted to talk about this and I am, I, I, I wanted to, I think I talked about it my last time when I was talking about the Gamma 5 or Gamma V, depends on how you want to talk about it. The ships that come apart with one mini ship in the front and a back end that just kind of sits there. Um, there you, you could talk about the, uh, the, 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 big, the big capital ships that came apart, the 6985, which of course I left in the bottom of my fish tank for 100 years. And and the the white and blue one before that the six nine eight one I think six nine eight one six nine eight oh six no probably six nine eight it's, I didn't look up those numbers <laughs> so mm -hmm. um, but uh, th those are the big ones the capital ships I'm I'm talking about the smaller ones and I I am deliberately leaving out the six nine three one FX Star Patroller because I haven't built it in a long time and I just want to take the time to build it. And it's not one of my favorites. I know it's my friend Chris is one of his favorites, <laughs> but it's not one of my favorites. Uh, the Gamma 5 was uh, in every, for me, every way, shape and form superior to the FX Star Patroller. And it was smaller and it's cuter. I mean, it, it is just, it just flows. Uh, I mean, the FX Star Patroller is really good, but I just found the back end just to be a big, huge Volkswagen bus block cube whatever with some attachments on it and um i, I ain't gonna build it because it's not the worst ship <clears throat> the worst ship is in this picture <laughs> in this video but uh I, I i i didn't i didn't hate the fx star patroller I, I i liked it but i liked overall these ones except for one of them more and so i haven't built it since i had it uh when i was a kid when i bought it and i should put it back together actually because I might, I might, I might change my mind. Because again, I, I changed my mind about the robot command center, because I did not like that one at all when I was a kid, and and I didn't even think about it until I got a few lots a bunch of years back, um, and then like within a year, I had three full ones from the lots I was acquiring, and and I fell in love with it. I really did. I mean, it's not it's not on the scale of this guy because this guy's my memories since I was since I first got it is just one of my favorite favorite ones. But it, it growed on me it was the second I built it. And I said, this is really unique. Uh, out of the entire space line, there are some very unique one-off sets. And the Robot Command Center is has never been done before, never done since. You could say the red and black robot, which I made in classic space colors. Let's see if I can get this thing fully screen here. <laughs> Uh, you could say that this is sort of comparable to the Robot Command Center, but you'd be wrong. <laughs> I mean, this has one ship coming out the back and it has a, a locker for, or a gel cell or whatever. And the top does come off. Uh, it's, obviously, it's missing pieces. Um, but the Robot Command Center is really unique in the pantheon of uh, Lego sets, Lego classic space sets. And I really liked it after 30 years of not liking it. <laughs> so... But anyway, so I'm going to talk about these these four ships, and I am adding the space police one in here. It's, it's not technically the same as the other three, where the small little canopy ship uh, separates from the back end, and you can leave the back end on planet or wherever, and you go off in your adventures. The black tron, I mean the uh, space police. Uh, the ship basically has a detachable electric section and the and the cell at the back, but it's here because um, it's comparable to the 6780 uh, light and sound XT Starship. See, I wrote down the numbers this time because <laughs> I wouldn't remember the numbers of this guy. I just finished building him. I just finished it now. And I, I remember buying this thing again in the store, uh, my first light and sound set. Um, I loved it. And uh, yes, it's fully working, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's a really cool looking spaceship. It really, do, it really does look like a spaceship, like especially a Lego spaceship, obviously. But it looks like it's it's got some uh, voids to it, some uh, appearance of wings, but voids there uh, using the struts. 
it comes apart nicely. And it also has a bonus, this cute little kind of, I, I won't say this is the best thing in the entire universe. <laughs> the first to say that, this is kind of meh. But overall, uh, the ship itself when it's together looks really, really well done. Really, really thought out. And this is what I'm gonna talk about, the aesthetics of um, a spaceship. And there's this line that goes all the way across and down to here from, from, the, from piece to piece, right? I would have continued it to the back, but that would kind of ruin the uh, slopes in the back. But I, I like the continuous line. I like how the this line stops. It's kind of sad a little bit. I would have just put white one by twos in there instead of black because it kind of just stops there. Uh, hiding the one by two printed brick. Uh, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm kind of ambivalent towards that. Uh, the top looks great. Uh, the bottom looks good. It's got all the landing things. Uh, and of course the light and sound just utterly fantastic. I like this set since the day I bought it. Um, as compared, as I said, to this guy, right? The, the lines do not continue. Uh, the black line doesn't continue. The white's sitting there glaringly sitting there. Uh, it, it, it looks frumpy. <laughs> I can use the word frumpy. Um, the cockpit on its own, my friends have talked to me about it and, uh, I've almost convinced me that this is almost worthy because again, it's unique looking. Looks like a frog hopper, right? Um, not too shabby. The gap still bothers me. It really does. I would have gone with the one by two uh, panels uh, that are in the, this guy here, like the these guys, the little panels, um, instead of this thing here. Because again, I like solidly sealed uh, cockpits. I really do. Uh, after watching The Martian and even before when I was a kid, I never liked the gaps. But I can see what they did. It looks aesthetically different. Uh, this guy on his own, kind of cute, kind of unique looking that's hanging down with the lights or the, the, the beams here. But um, when you add this, it, it's, it's, it's really frumpy looking. <laughs> it really is. To me, this was just a glorified parts pack. Uh, some of my friends really like this set and I, and I understand their, their uh, reasons for liking the set. Uh, and I'm not going to fault them for that. And I actually support them in their uh, their appreciation of the set. I don't like it also because it's uh, 1968 unnamed. <laughs> this one does not have a name. Every other one of these things has a name. This is the um, <laughs> this is the uh, XT Starship. This is the Gamma Five or Gamma V. <laughs> <laughs> I just love that. And SP Striker. Like these things, all have names except for that guy. And again, not that a ship needs a name. But um, I'm actually going to call it the Sneery from now on, by the way, because <laughs> my friend uh, likes that ship. And uh, so I'm actually going to have a special spot for that ship in my layout, probably. And it's going to have like a, a landing platform all to itself called the Sneery. Um, maybe. <laughs> or the Aeron. I'll have to figure it out. Um, so, but the light and sound. So let's talk about that for a sec, because I just finished building this guy. So the light and sound's kind of cool. Came with uh, three separate lights, but two with the one uh, lights and one with the double light on it, and the and the sound making thing. Uh, I I thought the nine volt system was utterly fantastic, and how easy it was. Those electric plates are just really really cool for wiring, and then you don't have to worry about actual wires. Uh, it works out well. Um, and yes, it's incorporated into the back and you have this, this big, huge battery box. The one thing I can't stand is that thing always pops up, but it has the battery, backs, battery box in the back. So you compare that to this guy, which doesn't have any sound, but it has the lights and it has the one by six LEDs and it has a little light up co console inside and then the picture of the ship on the console, which I thought was really, really neat. Um, it's like the old uh, six by five panels of the rocket launch that they had in the uh, the Beta One, and they uh, and the the astronaut floating out in space on, on the uh, nine two six set, the the original command center. Uh, I, I always liked those two six by five panels with the pictures on it. I wish they did that more, showing work outside the the set. So you put the set together and it has a picture on a panel somewhere of another set or a astronaut doing something else. They only did that twice. <coughs> Excuse me, as far as I know, uh, again, one in the beta one and one in the command center. Uh, but that, that little uh, picture there on the uh, lit up console, really, really cool. But again, so this thing comes off. So you got the jail cell coming off, the temporary. Come on. <laughs> this is what we're going to And this thing slides out. Now, the one thing that anybody who put the set together will know 
that this thing does slide even with the handles up. <laughs> so maybe I built it wrong. I don't know. <laughs> I guess it comes out this. These handles have nothing to do with locking it in place. And and this is kind of it doesn't look cool on its own. Uh, you know, you're not flying it. Maybe the guy sits there and works in the panel when you're gone. Um, and the universe uh, has to do something, so the guy would be sitting there. It's got a little control panel there, uh, so the guy can be standing in front of it doing some programming while this thing goes off. Now, this thing going off on its own kind of looks meh. Like, really, seriously, meh, because this whole back end's missing. It doesn't look cool enough on its own. Uh, it looks really big on the front and absolutely nothing in the back. When, uh, when the capital ship of the Space Police comes apart, that for a sec, not to go off in this tangent, but when the capital set comes apart, let me just wreck my room. <laughs> when the capital set comes apart, uh, this whole back end comes out, but the wings are still there. It does kind of look like meh when the when the back end is gone, but it's still it's big enough to go off and do whatever it's supposed to do. It just leaves the headquarters, the temporary headquarters, wherever it's supposed to wants to be. But the the uh, SP striker kind of looks like. Like nothing if it's not together. Like I, I even leaving this thing off is fine, right? Leaving this thing's off is fine. But now it looks like a spaceship. You take this off, this thing's like parked because it looks like it's most of it's missing. <laughs> most of it is missing, but it doesn't look like it's a spaceship that could go do anything. Uh, when it's here, then it looks like it's a striker craft. Uh, you know, it's got all these things on there. So that guy's crooked. But in the end, it, it does the same thing the other ships do, which is it, it, the back end comes off-ish and the front end can go off and do something else. So this thing comes apart, right? So now you got two sets. You got this thing sitting on the ground somewhere and this thing can go off uh, on an exploration or whatever. Uh, this thing comes apart, leaves the back end down on the ground. Uh, again, all these back ends, you can't fly on their own. In, in universe, these things just kind of sit there. Uh, kind of like the, the ring in... Uh, Obi-Wan spaceship. Basically, the rings are there to help the spaceship get to where it's going, but then you disconnect and the spaceship does this little exploring on the planet or whatever. So this thing looks great on its own. As I said, this looks interesting on its own. I actually don't mind that when it's by itself. The gap I'll live with. You know, It doesn't look like it has too many thrusters on it, but still, I mean, this thing down here, there you go, thrusters. Uh, this thing looks really cool on its own. Uh, I would have wished for some actual rockets, uh, four by four by two or something, but of course it would interfere with the back end when it was on. So this is good enough for getting around and again, the thrusters on the bottom maybe. Um, so all these things, these, these things, these sets were really nice because basically you got two playable pieces, two playable sets in one. Uh, now there's no interchangeability, which is kind of sad. I don't think I can put this thing on here. Let's try it. So this thing, oh, it does look that, <laughs> but it's, they're not the same height, so it's, it'll sit look like that. Um, but uh, they weren't going for interchangeability. This wasn't like Blacktron 2. <laughs> so um, Blacktron 2 nailed it uh, with the interchangeability of all the cockpits and all the back ends and all that stuff. It was, it was. Uh, I will say this, in Blacktron 2, it wasn't nearly as cohesive with Blacktron 1, but then again, Blacktron 1 only came out with three or four sets that actually had interchangeability and taken apart and put it back together in random parts. Blacktron 2, the cockpits could go on the other things really nicely. Uh, the other sets, they, you can swap them out. Uh, it didn't seem to have the uh, two or three pieces because again, even going with this guy here, this is what I just, just did the other day, right? So this is... This is the piece that uh, came with the set, and this piece came in the Renegade, and you can just kind of mix and match. So, and this piece can come off, and you can go in here. Like I found Black Tron the original, with the ability to swap parts like that in random ways, kind of neat. Where Black Tron two, basically you just swap the cockpits uh, around. This thing it had like you can just keep on adding, and then if you had a whole bunch more, you couldn't do this in Black Tron two. You can only do this in Blacktron. And if you had a lot more, you just make this thing as long as you wanted, right? So, so overall, these guys, let me just put them all back together now so we can wrap this up and have a nice little short video for a change. <laughs> these guys are some of my favorite classic space sets because of the playable, the playability function of the ships coming apart. 
And yes, the, the capital ships besides the Galaxy Explorer did that as well. The 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 blue and white one, the six. 980. I want to say it's a 6980. Um, the, the the back end came off, which was absolutely nothing without the lab in it. I mean, you take the lab out of the back end, it's just two wings and a couple platforms, right? Uh, and the 6985, which sat in my fish tank for all those years, so the entire back end comes off as a lab or a living area in the front end, still big enough to go off and do whatever it has to do. So uh, those are also huge playable playability functions. Um, but those were also very expensive. I remember buying them. <laughs> I remember very much buying them and breaking my bank account from all the lawn cutting money <laughs> that I had. Uh, whereas these guys, you walk in with a couple bucks, well, more than just a couple bucks, but a couple bucks, uh, and, and you have a mid-size spaceship that completes the collection, and, and they look good, uh, except for this guy. <laughs> they, they look good. And, and, and even the light and sound, I thought that was a fantastic add-on that they had. Um, but I always liked the ships that came apart more than the, the static ships that didn't come apart again, except for the Galaxy Explorer. Um, so I think that was my whole point that I wanted to talk about in this video. And we got a few things across. Um, I, I, I don't know what my favorite light and sound brick, uh, my favorite light and sound ship is, a uh, classic space set is. I always like this set when it's together. It looks really cool. But I also like just the aesthetics of this guy. This guy looks so cool. Uh, almost any angle. It's like the Enterprise where you have the, the angles on it and you say, that just looks cool, however you're looking at it. When it's together. When it's apart, like most of these ships when they're apart, it doesn't look nearly as nice, but then again, they're not supposed to. <laughs> But uh, anywho, uh, that's it. That's all. I'm going to wrap this up in 16 minutes. Everybody stay safe. Take care. Hope everybody's doing well. And I'll talk to you soon.